Welcome back to the tutorial series on Spectrum Synth. This tutorial is part one of a two-part series on the interactor modules. These modules function as a combination of an arpeggiator and a sequencer, and they were designed by Chris List, one of the Reactor User Group contributors. There are four interactor modules, and they can be assigned to different targets down here. There are numerous presets for the interactor modules, but to start off I'm going to go to an initialization patch and just call up the Solo Oscillator 1 initialization. In order to use Solo Oscillator 1, we've had to make sure that its volume is controlled by an envelope generator. With that assignment made, the Interactor module is going to be able to fire the envelope generator. Let's hook up Interactor Module 1 to work with the Solo Oscillator. First we turn it on. Here are the four Interactor modules, and we'll simply assign it to Solo Oscillator number 1. And there we go. Each Interactor holds 60 different patterns for transposition. These patterns control the transposition selection. Here we have eight transposition values. A reactor preset will save and recall the values that you choose for these boxes. Let's clear these values with this button. This upper table here allows you to make a sequence of transposition values. Each position in the sequence can be set to a value from 1 to 8. Each of these values corresponds to a transposition box. So a transposition grid set up like this would simply cycle through steps 1 through 8. And the clock-based speed of the interactor is set here. With all zeros in the transpose box, we're not going to hear anything. But keeping the cycling pattern here and arranging some different values here will produce a transposition of that step in the arpeggiation. But when I play two or three notes, the arpeggiation continues, but each step is transposed in the flow of the pattern. Before moving on, I'd like to discuss saving presets in the interactors. Changes that you make in a preset are not saved by your Digital Audio Workstation host. Here I've changed preset number 23, and I'm now saving in Logic. I'm now going to recall that saved file, and although the Logic session did pull up the correct preset number here, it still shows the original values. I'm also working with the auto save off, and the reason for that is that if I did inadvertently change a pattern, the auto save function in my host would overwrite the original ensemble with the changes that I've made to this pattern. I recommend that you work with the auto save off. This way the original ensemble, when called up, will recall the proper settings for many of the presets that are using the interactors. If you do make changes in a pattern and want to save those changes, then I recommend that you save the ensemble with a variation number, and that way your host program can call up that variation of the ensemble when you call up your session. If you want to start from an existing pattern, I recommend that you copy that pattern into a new location above the number 40. So you can start into those positions without worrying that you've changed settings that were in use in earlier presets. To summarize, a reactor preset will save the values in these transposition boxes, but changes you make in an existing pattern are automatically written in, so older reactor presets that use the interactors will find that the values had changed in those preset memories. If you're designing patches that use the interactor, save those patches in numbers higher than 40, and save a variation of your ensemble that will save these changes. Now that I've got the gnarly stuff out of the way, let's have some fun with this thing. Here I have a 7-step pattern, but this lower grid allows you to change the duration of each note. So what I've done here is I've taken note 5 and moved its duration to the next value, which is a doubling of the duration. You can also change the direction. I'm only playing a single note, but if I were to play a chord, we'll get very interesting transposition action. That was a three note chord being held. You can also use the chord feature here where each note will trigger three individual pitch components. I'm just holding down a single note here. If I hold down more than one note, you'll hear each note playing a chord and being transposed by the value in the cycle. Now 
let's add another section of spectrum synth using a different interactor. What you were hearing in that last example was the wavetable section running from interactor number one. Let's add solo oscillator one running from interactor number two. Let's go to panel A and assign an envelope generator to control the volume of the solo oscillator. We have volume on the solo oscillator. We see that it's sent out to filter number one and that the output signals for the two solo filters are up here. Let's mute the wavetable section for a minute and I just realized that I forgot to turn on the interactor number two. So we'll go back to the B panel and turn on interactor two. Let's bring back the wavetable section. Sounds cool. In part two of this interactor series, I'm going to talk about more complex voicing assignments. I'll wrap up part one with some examples of some presets that use the interactor modules. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching.